Good morning. Welcome to all of you listening at home on the internet and to all of you present here. We have a happy day, <laughs> joyful. Okay, we, as you can see, I am not Pastor Smith. <laughs> she is feeling ill, uh, and I am going to cover for her. My name is Doris Cirillo. I am a retired pastor here in this congregation, so just bear with me. <laughs> Okay, first thing, our announcements. Now, she says, uh, things will be back on track later this week. Plan on Bible study on Tuesday afternoon. Habakkuk is the minor prophet we'll look at. Pastor knows that there are some to whom she owes a phone call. Thank you for your patience. Pastor will attempt to resume the Advent daily devotion tomorrow on Monday. But check out our Facebook page for any update. Last week, we considered Tamar, and this week, we will turn to Rahab. Contributions for the poinsettias and the sights and sounds of the season are being received. We'll have the written form next Sunday, and until then, check the websites as contributions can be made there. The cost of the flowers has been going up every year, like everything else, and so the recommended contribution for those is $15, and any other contribution toward the many things that make this season so beautiful in our sanctuary are gratefully received as well. We're hoping that we may be able to get some additional banners in the future, and perhaps some of the Christmassy decor as some that we have is getting a little bit tired from years of use. Schedule of worship services for Christmas is on your announcement sheet. Please note that we will have a Christmas Day service at 10 a.m., followed by fellowship with Christmas cookies and cocoa or cider. More info will be forthcoming. Next week, we will be receiving new members both regular and also associate members. Please contact Pastor Pam by email for more information. Now, we have a very important thing to celebrate today. It is Ruth's 90th birthday. Awesome. Keep, uh, keep, keep up the good work. <laughs> okay. I think Naomi has a t uh, table talk. Good morning. Today is our Commitment Sunday. We've been talking to you all the month of November, and now is the time for you to bring forth your commitments and pledges for 2023. Um, you should have received a letter in the mail along with a brochure and a commitment card. If you did not receive one and would like to have one, please raise your hand and the ushers in the back will give you a commitment card to fill out. I know we probably missed some people and some, the mail has been a bit slow lately too, so um, thank you. There's also um, some pens in the back on the table if you don't have a pen with you. I brought some old pens from my desk drawer and I checked them, they all work. <laughs> So anyway, um, I want you to know that you can also give, if you're online, there's a lot of people that do watch online, um, you can also give by going to our website, Grace Lakeland, there's a PDF form that's downloadable and you can fill in the form and then email or mail it to the church office or just send an email to churchgracelakeland at gmail.com. So we've given you all kinds of options to make your pledge for your offerings for 2023. Now we've talked about, a bit about what um, the heart of grace is and what our generosity and our blessings are. And I just wanna remind you that your donations 
will go towards continuing our excellence in worship as well as developing um, more things for our worship to move it forward. Um, it'll go towards faith formation if, as a congregation and also towards our community outreach. So we have some really good things that your, your donations will go towards. Um, at the end of the offering today, we're gonna have regular offering as usual and the choir, the choir will be singing a song and then um, Pastor Doris will say a few words and then we'll have a time where you can process to the front of the church and place your commitment card in the basket. And if you don't feel comfortable about coming up to the front, I'm sure you can leave it at the back for the ushers and they can collect them as well. But this is our time to actually present our offerings to our, our God and thankfulness for all that has been given to us. And um, in January, um, we've had a goal. We were trying to increase our weekly offerings by about 1,500, but we'll let you know the results in January when we've had a time to collect everything from the congregation and from those who are contributing online, et cetera. And then we'll have a, a bit of a celebration to celebrate all that has been given to the church. So thank you and prayfully think about what you're gonna put on that card and um, God's blessings to you. Thanks. Thank you, Naomi. Now we will light the Advent wreath. But oh, you have one another announcement? Okay, another announcement. Oh, damn, you need this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have to unhook everything. As far as uh, today's service, later on, we're going to be doing the Toys for uh, Tots. As far as the uh, blessing of the toys, today is the final, final day for that, that project. I thank you very much. If you look into the fellowship hall, we have, I think, three or four tables filled with, with toys. Part of the toys came from a thriving grant, so that, that was mu much appreciated in that information. Along with Thrivent, we have two tables with seven different stacks of food for Oscar Polk. And this goes for their special Christmas uh, celebration or, or the or 30 kids, or actually 60 kids, are getting a special Christmas uh, package of uh, seven different items to make, make their cr Christmas a little extra special. We need a handful of people to stay out, to go into the fellowship hall. We have the bags, we're gonna double bag it. We have seven items, we just go around and fill, fill one, one item in, in, from the seven items in each bag, so it shouldn't take long if we have 20 or 30 people. Uh, that means everyone just fill, fills a bag, and then we put it on the counter. I thank you much. Thank you. And now we will light the advent wreath. Brenda? <laughs> the prophet Isaiah shared a word with a fearful world, a vision of gentleness and peace. I can't hear it. It's a red light. I think we may need new batteries. Yeah. Try talking. The prophet Isaiah. Yeah. It all comes down to logistics, doesn't it? <laughs> the prophet Isaiah shared a word with the fearful world, a vision of gentleness and peace. The wolf shall live with the lamb, he said, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. Animals we would never trust together will eat right next to each other, and their children will be safe with each other. Animals who like meat will eat plants. Tiny children will be safe even in places we would expect danger. God's mountain will be a peaceful place for all people because all will know how God wants things to be. As we wait 
faithfully for God's time, we light the candles of hope and of peace. Our peace comes from God, who became one of us in Jesus. We will sing two stanzas of Light One Candle. who you promised to bring forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, who will bring justice to the poor, deliver the needy, and crush the oppressor, who will bring peace to all people. As we light these candles, turn our wills to bear the fruit of repentance, transform our hearts to live in justice and harmony with one another, and focus our eyes on the root of Jesse, who is Jesus Christ, the peace of all nations. O oh, people of peace, come. And now we will prepare our hearts and minds to look for worship. need Brenda. Oh. Here she comes. <laughs> Will you please stand and face the fountain? Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's name forever. Amen. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us acknowledge our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love. Bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcoming your coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, 
a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. We sing hymn 249 on Jordan's banks. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Peace in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, nurture our growth as people of repentance and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. 
He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, and the young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the book of Romans. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may come with one voice Glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the prophecy, promises given the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it was written, Therefore, I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. 
In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise to welcome the gospel. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and his food was locust and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and old Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestors. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. The sermon you are about to hear was written by Pastor Pam, being the uh, short notification of her illness. There was no time to prepare one, but luckily she had one prepared. Grace to you and peace from God and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We've seen Christmas decorations are going up all around us. Many houses have lights adorning them. Christmas tree lots are busy. You've seen it too, yes? I see all sorts of red and green and gold and silver. And while I have not yet spotted an elf on the shelf, thanks be to God, I do see images of Santa appearing in a number of places. Candles are lit, ribbons and bows are tied. The fragrance of pine and cinnamon wafts from candles and cookies. Ah, it is all so lovely, isn't it? And into all of this loveliness come other in images. Wilderness, camel hair, locusts and stumps what do we know about a stump? It's what is left after just about the whole tree is gone. The taking down of a tree, the loss of its leaves, is such a shock to the root system that there are few signs of life, and often the tree will simply die off, and sometimes not. The prophet Isaiah said that there would be a shoot that would come out of the stump of Jesse. Who is this Jesse? 
Jesse is the father of David, who became the king of Israel, clearly the greatest king of Israel. He ruled when God's people were one nation, about the year 1000 BC. About King David, the Lord said, I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. No matter what happens, the kingdom of David is made sure forever, no matter what. Now, the words of the prophet Isaiah in our first reading was spoken at the destruction of the northern kingdom when the southern kingdom, Judah, found itself between a number of rocks, the empires of Assyria, Babylon, and Egypt, and a hard spot, the deep blue sea. Isaiah was speaking words of comfort to people who were threatened on every side. Many of us today may feel threatened on every side. To these and to us, the prophet describes what will be like because of that shoot that comes out of the stump of Jesse. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. Wow, can you imagine that? Can you imagine a world in which every creature on the planet is totally and completely at peace with every other creature? Wouldn't that be great? Yes, that seems like an illusory pipe dream these days. There is no shortage of discord around us. In our brokenness, we too quickly embrace categories and labels that divide us that pit us one against the other. Did you vote for him or for her? Are you black lives matter or all lives matter? Do I think that one is red or blue or green or perhaps gold? Build a wall or build a bridge? Are you this and are you that? And into this today comes John the Baptist as he does every year on the second Sunday of Advent. Into our midst of nation Christmas comes this wild one, this one dressed in camel hair, eating whatever the wilderness might offer to sustain him. And his message is clarion clear. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I want to speak for a moment about the word repent. When our wee ones hurt someone that they play with, we urge them to say that they are sorry. They say, I'm sorry, and the play resumes. All is back to normal, and that is good. It is good to teach that we each do things that are wrong and hurt one another. And it is good that we learn to say that we are sorry. What is not good is when our play goes back to the same old, same old, that gave rise rise to the problem in the first place. And that's what John the Baptist is speaking to. He exhorted us to repent. Repenting is not apologizing. Repenting is a turning, a reorienting of our views of things. Repenting means that we are willing to see things from another perspective. And then that we may even to be willing to yield to that. Repenting involves a yielding of our very self to the kingdom of heaven that is among us. And repenting means that our very self is wrapped up into proclaiming this kingdom of heaven, this kingdom that we bear, this kingdom that that is at hand, this kingdom, this kingdom of which we each are a part. One of my favorite theologians is Fred Buschner, May he rest in peace. And he describes repentance this way. To repent is to come to your senses. It is not so much something you do as it is something that happens. True repentance spends less time looking at the past and saying, I'm sorry, than to the future and saying, wow. So my friends, join me in saying, wow, 
Wow, the kingdom of heaven is among us and in us and with us, even now as we wait and wonder, even now as we come to the table, even now as we go forth to serve, even now as we look ahead. May it be so. And all God's people said, wow, wow. <laughs> Amen. Let us sing our hymn, our, which is... It is Prepare the Royal Highway, number 264. <laughs> Please join in confessing our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. for the fullness of Christ's presence. Let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God. You renew the church in every age. We give thanks for hymn writers and theologians, especially John of Damascus, whom we commemorate today. Inspire teachers, writers, and musicians to delight and instruct your people. 
God in your mercy. You give us a vision of creation in harmony when hurting and destruction will be no more. Teach us to be stewards of the earth and companions to its creatures. Restore to balance and wholeness what human greed has harmed. God, in your mercy. You defend the cause of all who are poor and oppressed. Raise up leaders who will govern with equity and serve the common good. Guide judges, lawmakers, and public officials to protect the rights of those who cannot advocate for themselves. God, in your mercy. You deliver those in need from suffering and fear. Come to the aid of any who are exploited or abused, especially children, elders, and victims of human trafficking. Provide safety and help to our neighbors without shelter, refugees, and those fleeing violence. God, in your mercy. You urge your people to welcome one another as you have welcomed us. Nurture ministries of hospitality and care in this and every congregation. We pray for people who are homebound, hospitalized, or separated from loved ones. Especially we remember Tony, Arlene, Timmy, Mike, Anna Mae, Julie, Kristen, Wendy, Angela, Carol, Ann, Lydia, Paul, Betty, Marion, Ron, Flo, Doris, Dottie, Teresa, Marion, Ian, Tim, Julie, Ruth, Ed, Henry, Mary, Greg, and Max. God, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for our pastor. May she heal very quickly. And also for our choir director, Harold Wright, who has unfortunately has COVID. So we pray that they will both heal and very quickly. God, in your mercy. You embrace all who have died, trusting in your promises, and we give thanks for their faithful witness. Sustain us in hope until we are united with them in the joy of your eternal presence. God, in your mercy. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Now we will receive your offerings.
friends in the heart of grace. Over these past several weeks, we have heard stories of grace generosity, both within our community of faith and beyond. We have participated in joyful and inspired worship. We've shared coffee and pie and gone about the ordinary ministry of this community of faith. Our weekly offerings, particularly an increase in our offerings matched dollar for dollar by a generous donor, will permit us to continue and even expand our care for one another and our community. Thank you for generously sharing a portion of that which God has entrusted to us. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you have called us to this community of faith and bid us participate in the, in the work and ministry you have for us to do. We thank you for this call. And Lord, we offer to you now these expressions of our intent to continue that participation through an offering of our treasure. We ask your blessing upon these, multiply them for your purposes, and to you alone will be the glory. And all God's people said, The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. 
bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We now pray the way our Lord has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The body of
Please rise. To me, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve us unto life eternal. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Before I was sending him, we'd like to bless the gifts that were donated for the cops for kids. As you can see how generous people are in this congregation, we greatly appreciate that. Lord, it is our deep joy to be able to gather together toys and games for the children of your kingdom, to help them to experience glee in things that simply delight. We ask your blessing upon each child and all the families who receive of these gifts. May these be a token of the love that you have for them. And Lord, we give you thanks for the law enforcement personnel who serve selflessly to protect and defend. Bless them as they serve and keep them safe from all harm. May these gifts help to build bridges among all in our community. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Go on in peace. Christ is coming. Thanks be to God. Sorry to disappoint you about our little circle, but that was not included in here. <laughs>